Hi everyone, I'm sure you've heard this by now. Uh, this is from CNN, which apparently is a news organisation, according to their website. But the United States is leaving the UN Human Rights Council. Quote, a cesspool of political bias. End quote. The reasons given. So this article says... The U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, announced the United States is withdrawing from the U.N. Human Rights Council Tuesday, accusing the body of a bias against U.S. ally Israel and a failure to hold human rights abusers accountable. Sorry, I couldn't say that without a straight face. It just crept up on me. Sorry. The move, which the Trump administration has threatened for months, came down one day after the office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights slammed the separation of children from their parents at the US-Mexico border as unconscionable. Yes, it is. It was happening under Obama, too. Speaking from the State, State Department, where she was joined by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, I still can't believe I say that, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Just imagine that. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, CIA Director Gina Haspel. Could you pick three people to be in those positions who could be any worse? You would have to go down the route of trying to select Charles Manson or somebody like that. Anyway, it goes on to say, quote, Human rights abusers continue to serve on and be elected to the council, said Haley listing U.S. grievances with the body. The world's most inhumane regimes continue to escape its scrutiny, and the Council continues politicising scapegoating of countries with positive human rights records in an attempt to distract from the abusers in its ranks. Yeah, positive countries with positive human rights records, like Saudi Arabia, which is also on the Council, which I assume America hasn't got a problem with. But the bit I really want to, uh, wrong hand, Gordon, the bit I really want to point to is that, that I've highlighted. That's their excuse for pulling out. Bias against the US ally Israel and a failure to hold human rights abusers accountable. The hypocrisy in that is off the frigging charts. A failure to hold human rights abusers accountable. Human rights abusers accountable. How about the abusers that the human rights abusers that shot this little boy in the knee with a fragmentation bullet from 700 yards through a sniper rifle scope? Ended up in that little boy's leg having to be amputated. He's lucky he didn't die. But many children have. Many children had have. What about that human rights abuse? What about those human rights abusers? What about the human rights abusers that have killed press? Yes, that's right, journalists covering these atrocities. What about the human rights abusers that have been shooting dead journalists like this guy? And this guy. I could go on. There have been several. What about the human rights abusers who shoot medics like this wonderful woman who used to give up her weekends to go and help people who have been shot by IDF snipers. To go and fix up their wounds and take care of them after they've been shot. What about the human rights abusers who shot her dead? 21 years old. Her name was Razan Al-Najjar. Razan Al-Najjar. Remember it. What about the human rights abusers who shot her dead? The hypocrisy here is absolutely unfathomable. It really is. And if you're American right now and you're as disgusted as this as I am, and I know that many Americans who watch my channel and my videos, and I know they're going to be disgusted and outraged at the hypocrisy here. I know that. But I don't think... Americans generally understand just how the rest of the world is looking at their country right now. I don't think they understand just how the rest of the world is looking and are horrified by what they see. I really don't. Because if I'm anything to go by, and believe me, I look at the UK in exactly the same way. 
I'm, I'm horrified by the stuff that we do. But it's nowhere near the scale that is happening in America and has been happening for quite some time. Trump maybe has made people more aware of the stuff that they're doing. Maybe he's doing more, but it's been happening for decades. But right now, the rest of the world looks at America and are horrified. It mentions in that article, speaking from the State Department, where she was joined by Secretary of State Mon Pompeo, Haley defended the move to withdraw from Iran, saying US calls for reform were not heeded. Reform of what? Reform of the Human Rights Council. So I, I assume they mean kicking Saudi Arabia off it. Of course they don't. They mean countries they're not aligned with. It doesn't mean Saudi Arabia and Israel should go. And the UN High Commissioner there nailed it. He nailed it. How can a country that is separating children from their parents and having them crying and locked in cages right now, who are coming to the country because they are being persecuted and they are in danger of being killed in their own country. They're being separated from their mothers and put in cages. How can any country who is doing that right now be talking about human rights in other countries? It's despicable. It's de despicable. And it's important here to understand why this has happened. Because this, isn't ha this hasn't happened because Nikki Haley and Donald Trump and Mike Pompeo and the, and the American administration. This hasn't happened because they're appalled at human rights violators being a allowed on the council. Because their allies, who are the, the biggest human rights violators on the council, are on that council. They're not talking about them. They're not talking about the human rights that the UK and the US are actively supporting right now. The human rights violations going on in Yemen. The biggest humanitarian crisis on the planet. The largest outbreak of cholera in history. In history. And we're still bombing the country to oblivion. And now we've taken the port where 80% of their food and their medicine goes through. I wonder, how, I wonder what hold-ups are going to happen there. I wonder what, how much suffering is going to happen in Yemen. This is an absolute joke because it's got nothing to do with human rights. Their decision to pull from it has got nothing to do with that whatsoever. What's it got to do with? Money. Money, money, money. APAC and the pro-Israel lobby and people who are pro-Israel in America who are huge donors, not just to the Republican Party, but to the Democratic Party too, they're the ones who want this gone because the, the, the United Nations Human Rights Council wanted to do something about Palestine and Gaza. And it's America and the UK who are stopping it from happening with some help from the Australia, Australian government too. Yes. Australia didn't want any investigation into this as well. There were only there's only Australia and US that voted against it. The UK abstained. The BBC didn't even put that in the article. This is what it comes down to money. Money and just the same with Trump reversing this decision to take babies and children away from their parents at the border. The only way things will change in Israel, the only way things will change with Israel and their crimes against Gaza and their crimes against Palestine is if the public get up and are outraged about it. It's the only time anything changes. Any time. Until... It was last year, I think, or the year before. It might have been. It was when Cameron was president, uh, um, prime minister. In the press, migrants coming from these countries that we're bombing, by the way, that are fleeing these countries that we're bombing and coming into Europe, seeking asylum and saying, "Please, we're going to get killed over there," and dying on the boats on the way through Italy and other countries on, in the Mediterranean. 
Their press were calling them swarms of migrants and plagues of migrants. Until what? Until this picture of the little boy who was washed up and died on the shore. Then all of a sudden the rhetoric changed and Cameron changed. Why? Because the public were outraged. And it's the same with Trump going back and reversing this with the, his executive order, which, to be honest, I don't think reverses anything. But at least now, something might get done about it. The only time it happens is if the public got outraged. If the public didn't get outraged about this, if the press didn't get outraged about it and didn't have the public support, nothing would have got done. Nothing. Until the American public and the UK public as well, until we both rise up and are as outraged as I am. Nothing will get done. More children will get killed. More children will get amputated. More mothers will be shot in the belly by an IDF sniper saying one shot, two kills. More human rights atrocities are going to be carried out by Israel until we stand up and stop it from happening. Boycott, divest, sanction. It's worked with an apartheid state before. It will work again with this one. We have to get vocal about this. We have to get up. The minute opinion changes with the UK and the US people, the minute it goes over 50% support for withdrawing money from Israel and support for Israel, the minute it gets over 50%, you watch how quick the gov not just the government, the, Republi the Republicans and the Democrats, because Chuck Schumer supports all this, Nancy Pelosi supports all this, the minute public opinion goes over 50%, you watch what happens, you watch how fast it is they change. The only way it's going to happen is from us, from people like me and people like you out there watching this. Get involved, get angry and get active because it's the only way it's going to change. They are killing children, they are killing journalists and they are killing doctors and now they've passed a law to say, hey, if you film us committing these atrocities, if you film us doing these crimes against humanity, we're going to throw you in prison for up to 10 years. Virtually assuring that they can carry on with these human rights violations and these crimes against humanity unimpugned. Or with impunity rather. We have to get active and we have to get vocal. Write to your MP if you're in the UK. Write or call your legislator or your representative. Do something. Don't just get outraged. If I would rather, I would rather the people watching this video not make any comments down there if it means that they actually write something to their representative. Let them know. It's the only way it's going to change because otherwise the money they get from the pro-Israel lobby, from people who are pro-Israel in the US and the UK, that's going to speak louder than we do. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and please click the bell down there so you get a notification of when I drop further videos. Otherwise, YouTube will hide the video from you. Yes, they have admitted that they do that. Also, we're facing an absolute onslaught in independent media from the establishment at the moment, including YouTube. I don't make any money from YouTube whatsoever. I rely totally on the audience for me to continue doing this. So if you can afford to send me $2, $3, $5, whatever it is that you can afford through Patreon, again, the link is down there, I will be eternally grateful and it will allow me to keep giving you the truth and cut through the propaganda and the BS that we get from the corporate and establishment media. If you can't afford to do it, please share the video as widely wide as you can. Talk to your friends and family about the issues that I and other channels on YouTube who are independent raise. Thanks very much for your support. We have to fight back against this. Till next time, peace and take care.